so here's the outline that will kind of bounce through an overview and objectives of, of what the study is about, problem statement. Um, literature review, which is moderately sparse, I guess, which is good for me because there's really not a lot of literature and research having been done on international student athletes specifically. A um, little bit about the um, framework that I hope to use, methodology, and then um, implications and conclusions. So I think most people in this room know a little bit about me. Thank you for the introduction, um, Simon. And yes, I do have a background in coaching. So um, the, the segment of student athletes is a little bit um, near and dear to my heart. But as is just the um, success of students in general. And I do think that um, those of you who have had me in class or, or know of my um, you know, teaching that that's, working with undergraduate students is really important to me and helping them sort of find their way. Um, and I think finding their way, a big part of that, whether they're domestic students, um, international students, um, or student athletes, um, there's just a lot of challenges with um, entering into um, higher education for the first time and trying to trying to figure out how you're going to navigate all of that. And so I think that um, that is sort of what drew me to the topic. And then, like I said, to just sort of narrow it down and get specifically to student athletes and then international student athletes. Um, I think that that's, you know, on this campus alone, I have a lot of international student athletes in classes that I teach. Um, I attend a lot of sporting events on this campus and there are a lot of international student athletes that um, attend this university. Um, so I think that it's, that's sort of what drew me to the topic. So if we kind of look back a little bit, when, when I dive into, the, um, dive into the literature in a minute, what you'll hear me not talking about is just the general international student um, enrollment um, and the implications and the benefits and the challenges there per se. Um, been, there's been a fair amount of research done um, with international students in general. Um, but the benefits, the challenges um, that, they, that they endure and they face, um, those are really not very different than the international student athletes themselves. Um, as far as institutions, I think that there are benefits that come with having international student athletes and international students in general on our campuses. Um, and then I think that for the respective countries of the students that come here from other countries and for ourselves their economic benefits um, and challenges faced. Um, it may perhaps if those students choose not to go back home um, to their respective countries. Um, those are all kind of outside the scope of what I'm gonna talk about. What I am gonna talk about specifically is try to narrow down and look specifically at international student athletes. So this is a map of the United States um, for all you internationals. Uh, Rachel, <laughs> can you find yourself here, Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> Over here somewhere. Um, all right, so this is uh, NCA member institutions. All right, uh, the orange spots are uh, Division Three athletic programs. Oh, those are the green ones. I'm sorry. The green ones are Division Three. The or smaller, less um, less competitive in nature. Um, Division Two, a little more competitive, a little more businesslike in their model, and then Division One. Um, is, are the more business-like models. So um, of the international students that uh, I plan to investigate, uh, they could be looking at this map and try, trying to um, choose any number of those spots to aim for. So I guess the point of it is that there's, there's a lot of opportunity out there for international student athletes should they choose to study in the US. Uh, this is a bar graph, as you can see. Um, I've, I've walked through this one other time and I stumble on this bar graph every time because it's so distorted looking, all right? This is 2010 and 11, and this is 2016. These are all um, student athletes here, and so that you can see the rise, the gain, in the number of student athletes that are participating in sport in general. Um, it looks a little bit distorted because these are the numbers of international student athletes, and what I was trying to demonstrate was, look at we've got a rise happening. There's an increase in the number of international student athletes um, at Division I institutions, which is, which is true, but it looks a little bit, um, it doesn't look so glaring because the number of student athletes in general at the division one level is, is growing. So I guess what I'd like you to focus on is the fact that um, there is an increase um, and that increase has, has happened from 2010 to, to 2016. Um, the other thing that I think is a little bit of interest is if we look at 2010, um, we've got about you know, 8,200, 8,300 international student athletes here, okay? Um, the women are lower in number than the men. We've got 
about 4,100. And for the men, we've got 4,178. If we look at 2016, the numbers have flipped, and we've got more women international student athletes than we do male student athletes. And I think that that is a trend, and we can address that later, but um, it will also, uh, it weighs into the direction that my study might go and the fact that I may in fact choose to investigate women specifically for a couple of reasons. But anyway, that's part of the motive for that is there is a trend in this, in this increase. So my problem statement, what I would like to investigate is this concept of adjustment um, of international student athletes as they arrive at an American institution and get acclimated. Uh, based on the research, um, these are some common areas of challenge, okay? And it's common sense, okay? My favorite line in life tends to be, it's not rocket science, but it's not rocket science. I mean, these are challenges that any student faces when they come to college. Academic life, okay? Athletic life, if they're an athlete, social networking, personal and emotional um, challenges, and then just I developing an identity with the university. Now, if you're an international student athlete, that academic life, those challenges might be um, based on the major that you're studying. Maybe you're trying to major in something and you're being directed to major in something else, perhaps. Um, maybe it's not as challenging as it was in your country. Maybe it's more challenging. Um, what about the language barrier? So there's a lot of different things that could influence that make that a challenge for an international student athlete. Athletic life. Is the coaching different? Are the time demands different? Um, is the type of training different? How does that balance in with the academic piece? Um, Social network, this is probably one of the strongest um, indicators of a challenge for international student athletes. And it, it could be dovetailed with the, the idea of the language barrier in part. Um, but in all of the research, social network is one of the things that surfaces as a challenge for international students and international student athletes. And if you think about it, um, the, the domestic students that come to school at an institution, a lot of them have existing friends. They're, they're not shy about getting involved in activities. And if an international student doesn't have a network, um, that becomes more of a challenge for them. So that's kind of one that I would gold star. That personal and emotional connect could be tied to um, homesickness, you know, leaving friends and family, those kind of things, again, which are not unique to an international student athlete, but are often compounded by the distance. Um, and then just developing an identity with, with the university itself. Um, so why, why should we care? Well, I mean, as a professor, I care a lot. Um, as an employee of higher institution and being concerned about what the mission of higher education is, I do think that we should care. The bottom line is that we would hope our mission would be to have our students and or student athletes graduate. In order for that to happen, they have to be retained. We have to have retention. In order for retention to happen, they've got to feel comfortable, all right? So that whole comfort thing, comes back to the idea of being adjusted to their environment and being able to handle what comes their way. So I think that the bottom line is we should care because it's part of our mission to care and help um, with the development and the education of um, international student athletes and all students. So look at the literature review. You'll figure out my nomenclature here probably, but the I student is just international student in general. Okay, So there has been an increase in international students in general, pretty, pretty predominant growth over the last 30, 40 years. Um, and international student enrollment in general is influenced by the fact that international students um, want to come to America perhaps for the value of a foreign degree, a degree from the United States, um, perhaps better opportunities, um, a little more um, likelihood of getting admitted. In some countries, it's uh, very competitive to get into um, some of the universities. So that was a theme that um, surfaced a little bit. Um, cost, I put a plus and minus next to that. Uh, a lot of international students, if they can pursue and attain a research assistantship or a graduate assistantship, then that provides an opportunity for them. Um, and then some are influenced by the thought that if they can get here, that they might stay here for a while, all right? Just I immigrate and, and end up being um, in the States. So this is kind of the, the influencing factors, if you will, for international students in general. International student athletes, very similar kind of incentives. Uh, prestige for a certain university or affiliation with a certain university and that um, athletic program, as well as a type of degree. Uh, potential employment options that might uh, 
evolve after their, their time at an institution. Um, superior facilities, advanced training and competition. That's definitely unique to the international student athlete piece, but the opportunity to elevate their training uh, and the opportunity to experience American culture. Um, in some of the later research that was done, this actually became even more evident where international student athletes in particular are a little bit, uh, uh, they like to explore, they're, they're, they're more willing to go out and try new things and, and want to experience the different cultures. As far as recruitment by the institutions, what is the motive by the institution to bring international student athletes here? The one in the middle is probably the most paramount thing driving it is the athletic talent, all right? To um, recruit and bring in international student athletes that can raise the bar, raise the standard, raise the quality of an existing team. Um, so that is the number one thing that, that uh, coaches um, are doing when they're on the recruiting trail. Um, as well to raise the academic merits, okay? A lot of the uh, student athletes that come in from um, other countries have a, a strong education and do very well. Um, academically, so that raises the um, grade point average of their teams. Um, and then um, just in general, bringing diversity and multicultural and a unique aspect to their teams. Um, and I think that that becomes, I don't want to say trendy, but that is like, that's a selling point to a lot of uh, coaches who do recruiting to be able to demonstrate that they've got the ability to um, have a diverse team and help with just the growth of their own, um, own team and their uh, multicultural perspectives. So the challenges faced by students, um, mental health, emotional adjustment, language proficiency, cultural challenges, and social networks, okay? This is international students regardless of whether they're student athletes or not, all right? Uh, international student athletes in their first year, and then there have been a couple of studies done, international students in their first year, and then international students versus domestic students, trying to compare those two to see whether the challenges are more alike than different or to what extent that they're different. Um, those first year transitions are the most difficult, regardless of whether you're international or not. Um, Self-defeating, um, getting depressed, feeling like uh, it's just not worth it, being lonely, being homesick, um, and again, this need for socialization. Um, this is especially noticeable in the international student athletes and not so much in the domestic student athletes. Okay, domestic students. When we say, what is the mission of higher education and how is success measured? This is really what it all comes down to when I say, why does it matter? It matters because the goal of higher education is to um, develop students and help them get through and earn a degree. Well, that degree is measured by success. Success is measured by retention. So there have been tons and tons and tons of studies done related to persistence, related to retention, related to engagement and involvement. And in fact, that was what my PhD was themed on specifically um, with intercollegiate athletes and to what extent they were engaged and involved on the greater campus with faculty and with their peers and um, just in general across the campus. So I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the idea that retention equates with graduation and just because there's a ton of literature that supports that. So herein lies the problem. When we look at international students, I could find one research um, study that had indicated, hey, guess what? Academic success leads to retention. And if a student is going to be academically successful, then we need to take care of some of those uh, challenges that they face when they first get here. Again, it seems like common sense, but there's really not a whole lot to back it up other than kind of connecting the dots from afar. If we look specifically at international student athletes, and their retention. The only way that I could get data on international student athletes and their retention would be to go to the NCAA and look specifically at graduation rates and tease out those numbers. No research, no literature can be found specifically on international student athletes and um, whether they're retained or not. It's just looking at the data points yourself, all right? So these are good things for me if this is what I want to look at, I figure. Um, a little bit of the critique, you know, I know that as we look at, a liter at the literature, we're supposed to kind of dig in and we're supposed to find things that maybe um, are incomplete or information that conflicts with other information or things that just don't quite seem right. So um, there was one study done, and when I get to the conceptual framework, you're going to see that there's kind of three wheels, and one of, the, one of the wheels has to do with satisfaction. And what about international student-athlete satisfaction? 
Um, I could find one study. Um, in my opinion, it, it, it wasn't the strongest study because they, it, had a great, it had a great amount of, um, of uh, had a great N, you know, or it was, it was over 200 students that they had done a quantitative study on, and, and these students had completed a questionnaire. But the, the discussion and the findings based on the answers to that questionnaire, to me, they were, they were kind of missing each other, and I didn't really see the connection. So I felt like there were some leaps made with the conclusions there. Um, I don't think the instrument was a bad one, but I think it was too broad to get at what the authors were trying to really tease out with respect to, is the student athlete satisfied with their experience? It just wasn't very telling. Um, so I thought, okay, well, so this warrants further investigation, and that's mental note to come back and revisit that. Um, there was some, a couple of uh, studies done that contradicted each other, and, and these are important because these were kind of right down my alley. These are things that I especially want to get in and look at with regard to this adjustment to the academics, the social, um, the, the um, emotional and personal adjustment, and those kind of things. So um, Rittinger and Pastor, they actually are the ones that designed the framework, which I'll pull up in a second. Um, good idea. It, they, had a great, they had a great questionnaire that they had filled out, students fill out. Um, pretty high return on it, with the exception of the population that they were looking at, international student athletes specifically, only had 16 students that completed the survey. And then the domestic students and just the international students in general, that, you know, they had hundreds of those. So they had all of this data, but the group that they were really looking at was quite small. Okay, so I thought that that was prob problematic. Having still had a very small N, a small number, for the international student athletes, they still said that international student athletes statistically were better adjusted, self-reported, better adjusted, um, than international, or the international student athletes were the best adjusted compared to domestic student athletes and compared to just domestic students in general and international students. So at first glance, people were thinking, wow, this is great. International student athletes, they're actually doing okay. They're, they're commenting that they are quite comfortable in getting adjusted and that these things aren't as great a challenge as perhaps we thought. Um, so it sounded like a, a good thing, all right? Well then, in 2009, Pops, Hums, and Greenwell, they did a similar study, okay? And they figured out that, uh, no, we got different information out of, out of this. And we figured that the, the international student athletes actually have lower levels of adjustment than domestic students. And there's more to that study, but that was the finding that connected or, or contradicted um, most with, with that. So international student athletes versus domestic student athletes versus just domestic students and their overall adjustment. So um, Rittinger and Pastor said, okay, we need to look at this further. We did it quantitatively. We didn't have enough international student athletes. We think this needs to be looked at qualitatively. Let's figure out how we can do that. So they created this uh, theoretical model um, which only one other group has kind of grabbed onto this and started to go down the path investigating it. As you find when you do research, it, it becomes circular very quickly and everybody's kind of trying to look at the same thing. So this is the model people have grabbed onto, one other group. Um, and this part has been investigated. The antecedents, kind of like the, the background of these students and what, what makes them who they are and um, what brought them to the institution and, and how kind of they're prepared to go forward, if you will. And the, and the frameworks in here were this idea of personal, um, be that self-efficacy of I feel really prepared for college, my language ability is okay. Um, I, and they added this whole notion of um, being a little bit adventurous and wanting to travel. That was something that revealed itself in, in a study that they did. Uh, this perception of how realistic they are, what kind of support they've got behind them, if they're really prepared to take this on athletically and academically, the cultural distance, and then this interpersonal relations as far as teammates and coaches and faculty and staff. So this has been investigated a little bit, all right? And the themes in having conversations with uh, international student athletes about these kind of themes are revealing these other categories that need to be further investigated. So this is kind of where I want to jump in and focus my study on would be the adjustment piece and looking more closely at the academic, the social, athletic, this institutional attachment and the personal um, and emotional relation. Now I think that there's probably 
you know, there's going to be some crossover there, and ideally, my findings would in turn be able to, um, you know, contribute and support other findings that have been done before me. But that's where my focus is. And then again, um, nothing done on outcomes here at this point, other than the one study that I could find. So I can kind of see the, a progress toward looking more at satisfaction and um, whether that's academic performance, athletic performance, um, overall satisfaction with the experience um, moving on out of college. So antecedents, so it was Pop and Low and Kim and Hums that looked at these antecedents and uh, they did a qualitative study. Um, so they took, the, they took the advice of Rüdiger and Pastore and said, okay, yep, let's look at it qual qualitatively. Let's dig in and ask some um, uh, questions in some interview processes and see if we can uh, kind of you know, dig in and get a little bit more information. So like I said, they, they revealed a couple other themes. They had faculty and staff, um, what did not surface as a theme at all, interaction with international student athletes and faculty and staff and professors or even staff within the athletic department didn't surface as, as being as uh, big a factor as the um, teammates and the coaches. All right, so just to give you another overview, looking back at the adjustment piece. So for my proposed study, like I said, I would like to kind of dig in and look at the um, adjustment piece. And for me, I think looking at, in these other studies, when they've looked at different sports, there hasn't been much attention paid to whether it was a revenue-generating sport or not a revenue-generating sport. That may or may not um, have an influence in the pressure that a student athlete feels. Um, there was no specific breakout by gender. Like I said, I think that I would lean specifically on looking at women, and part of that is an access. I wouldn't call it an issue, but I have greater access to um, women athletes perhaps than I do um, men athletes. Um, I would look at credit count and sort of break it down whether, what, how many years have they been on the campus, or um, what is their credit count? Where are they? Where are they? Are they in their first year at the institution? Um, that experience and um, the comments that they make about their adjustment in that first two years is going to be very different than in year three and four. Um, what is their region of origin? Is, this, is English their first language or not their first language? Uh, have they spent more time in the States? Um, uh, are they on scholarship? How much scholarship? Is there pressure related to that? Um, and then their academic interests. So those are things that I'm sort of mulling around in my head as I look at these various adjustment factors. Um, so yep, I would do qualitative uh, because I think it's important to get the student athlete's uh, perspective um, and I don't feel like I can get that in a quantitative study. That's not to say that a quantitative study couldn't evolve out of something like this, but I, I think to start with conversation would be good. Um, In-depth, semi-structured interviews, maybe with three or four respondents in a group, um, 40 to 60 minute type things, audio record transcripts, follow up for clarification. Pretty straightforward, qualitative. Um, again, I would group them by how long they would been on campus. Uh, I think the sports I would look at, um, I, I have another slide which I didn't replace in here, but I, there's no particular reason why I didn't include um, volleyball or soccer on this. I did and I just didn't save it to this slide, but I think rowing, basketball, tennis, swim, track, field, um, soccer, volleyball, all of those sports have quite a few um, women athletes that are international. Um, and then, again, I don't know that it has to be narrowed to the D1 or NAIA. Um, I would say it would probably be more, um, I'll get to my limitations, but as far as access for me, I would probably stay in the Northwest, Oregon, Washington, Idaho. Um, access, um, I would contact them um, via email with a conduit, you know, somebody that I know that could uh, give me um, credibility with them, coach, operations staff, former teammate. And I think that once, um, once the can of worms got opened that I, I think I would have access to, you know, somebody who knows somebody who could connect me with somebody, that kind of a thing. So I don't think finding um, international student athletes to visit with would be a challenge. Um, like I said, sports covered, interview location, you know, on a campus, uh, at a coffee shop, whatever would be convenient to the student athlete. Um, Open-ended questions, like I said, what did you find most challenging about? And I have some, I have some survey things drafted because the next step then would be to um, run this through IRB, obviously. Um, and just determine if those categories are the primary challenges that international student athletes are facing. Um, limitations, I think I would be looking at women only, so that could be a limitation. Um, I don't know that I would stick with Division I programs. Like I said, it would be more of a geographical um, determination for me. Um, 
So obviously there's a lot of D1 and D2 and D3 schools across the state of Washington and Oregon and Idaho that I could get to, so that would be pretty easy. But so those are kind of in the working stages. Implications, um, I think the findings could obviously inform the framework that's already been laid out and fill in some gaps there. Um, I think there's a potential for a longitudinal study to look at these international student athletes. Um, if I build a relationship with them through an interview process to see where they go and what they do and reflect back on their career, their career and their experience um, at a uh, university in the United States, um, what their assimilation is like going back to their home culture. Um, it could inform best practices for advising, um, and not only for international student athletes, but also for international students in general, which brings me to the next bullet point, which um, a lot of universities are partnering with this organization called INTO. And INTO is, um, their big promotion is that they're trying to, basically they're trying to make universities a lot of money, I think, um, by recruiting international students to attend their institutions. And the, the selling point is, is that it's enhancing the international students' experience, it's enhancing the domestic students' experience, having this exchange, um, it's uh, increasing the brand on a global scale and those kind of things. Um, but it's definitely happening. Um, so if universities are going to be in, in this business of recruiting and bringing in international students, here, then I think um, we need to be better about helping them adjust and be successful and be retained. Um, so what that might look like. Um, and it, the information could also help us kind of lead down the path and make that satisfaction investigation a little bit more thorough than at least the one that I um, read. So I said uh, marketing, because I was hoping the marketing people would be here. Marketing is about meeting the needs and the wants of the consumer, and the public university um, administration provides these services and programs to meet the needs and the wants of the international students. And so um, the reason for this study would be to make sure that we could actually do a good job of that. So those are the key themes, again, that I would investigate and try to figure out how the international student athletes are doing once they get here. Um, there's quite a few journals that, that, that this would uh, possibly be publishable in uh, that mostly relate to higher education, some of them specifically to sport. I think all but one of them is peer-reviewed. And that's all I got so far.